Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And this week's episode is gonna be another fun, kind of cool video. And it's gonna be about finding my birth dad. I just turned 30 years old on December 20th and it was my first time meeting my birth dad on Thanksgiving a few weeks before my birthday. And I just wanna talk about that journey because I know there are other people out there that are going through the same thing of wanting to find their birth parent and you might have a lot of questions and emotions involved and I just want to take you on my journey so that you can get an idea of what you might experience. Not every situation is going to be the same but I just want to put that encouragement out there that if this is something that's really important to you, um, I know the journey and I know the struggle, um, but I can tell you that it could pay off. So if you're interested in seeing how I found my birth father and how the relationship is and how the introduction and the first meeting was and the first phone call, then keep on watching. Someday soon I'm gonna make it yeah, our hard work's gonna be worth it. Ooh, everyone who didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Alright, guys, now I'm gonna tell you about this journey from when I started looking for my real dad, what kind of information I was left with, um, and then ultimately how I got to actually meeting my real dad and having a relationship today. So I've had a lot of inspiring people in my life that they also didn't know their birth father and I saw those relationships um, flourish and happen and I've also seen relationships flourish and happen and then a few years later they lost their birth parent but the ultimate goal is getting to know that birth parent and that side of the family and there's so many circumstances as to why the other parent may not want you to have a relationship and sometimes that's maybe warranted if it's a child abuser i can totally understand why a parent would want to protect their child or maybe their murderer just you know abusive or whatever it is however i think that it is every person and human person's right to get to know their birth parents if they want to and then it's really up to that birth parent to decide if they want to let this person, their child, have a relationship with them. And the ultimate dream is that the birth parent does want to have that relationship no matter how much time has passed. And that's exactly what happened in my situation. When I was eight years old and I learned how to use a computer in grade school, uh, my family got one of those computers shortly after. And I'm talking, they were the big chunky, like, I don't even know, like Windows computers or whatever they were. Anyway old old times <laughs> um we use floppy disks in school let's just say that and i know there are older computers out there trust me i know but yeah it was back to the dinosaur ages um anyway so i had started looking for my dad when i learned how to use the internet because i was like well if you can search anything then i could search my real dad and i had very limited amount of information i knew his name his brother's name his brother's daughter's name and a company that he works for, worked for. And I had a little wallet sized picture of his brother's daughter and her mom. And at her age, we looked identical other than she had her mom's mouth. So the mouth was a little bit different, but everything else we looked identical. So I definitely knew that was a relative right then and there. And that's really all the information I had. I didn't even know my grandparents' names, like nothing. I didn't know how many brothers and sisters. Um, and I wanted more answers. Well, of course, being eight years old and using the internet, and at that time, there wasn't as much websites or resources or information available, but I did my darndest and I kept with it over the years. So even into my teenage years, and then I would try and you know talk to my aunt about hey you were the only relative that was around or the only person in my mom's life that I can reach out to that was in her life at the time what do you know and really she was kind of doing her own thing like even though they were around each other 
Um, so there is still not a lot of information from her side other than that she said my real dad was a great family guy and that she could see him accepting me and so she totally understood why I would want to find him and she encouraged me to keep finding him and I stuck with that and there's always going to be two sides to every story and then the truth but ultimately I think it is a child's um you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's it really should be up to the child if they want that relationship. And if it really didn't, if it wasn't a danger to their life for them to get to know their parent before 18, I mean, I say parents, even if you don't want to have a relationship with your child's father, think about your child in that instance, because your child has every right to have that relationship unless they're a child abuser or a murderer, obviously in prison or something like that, or into drugs. And then I get that. But at the same time, it's you got to take yourself out of the equation and think about your child and that relationship. And also going into adulthood, um, your child having medical issues, it's imperative to know your child's father or mother, this could go either way, um, to know their situation. And so if your child gets sick, you might know what ran in the family on the other side that doesn't run in your family. So I just... I only hope that parents can put aside their differences, at least for the child's sake, to allow that relationship to happen. Um, but for whatever reason, if that doesn't exist, then when your child turns 18, they have every right to know their birth parent and you no longer have a choice of what your child is going to do or not do because they are 18 years old, they're a legal adult. And I was told when I was younger and I would ask questions about my dad, um, my mom would tell me she would give me the information that she had when she turned 18 and that's really all I knew. Um, and so I just kept trying and I got on a bunch of like birth parent finder websites trying to find him and apparently he found one of them crazy. Um, and the issue is, is that over the years, my email changed. Um, I became older so you know your emails become less teenager and childlike and more adult like and then I kind of lost track of all the sites that I had posted on and so I never got a notification that he had replied otherwise that relationship could have happened sooner so I say if you start looking for your birth parent um, make a log of all the sites that you post on and also try and use one email but if you do change your email make sure you keep the other email active and check it periodically just to see if you got a notification that they reached out to you because then you can have that relationship a lot sooner um if at all so that's important anyway so i didn't have any information then when my when i did turn 18 my mom gave me a packet and really this packet was a bunch of possible people. Um, there was like an old address when she had tried to go after him for child support when I was in seventh grade. And I do remember that happening. Um, but because I had a different person on my birth certificate, cause I have my sister's dad on my birth certificate. Um, I remember it got thrown out. And so I don't know like why nothing happened beyond that point. Um, but I was lucky enough to have an old address from there. So I thought I could get somewhere with this old address so much so that I researched this, that I had this address memorized. <laughs> and when I actually met my dad, I was, or I was saying this address and he was like, yeah, that was my old address. Like literally had it memorized. Um, so yeah, that, that happened. And then, um, I really couldn't find a lot. So I started reaching out to my friends in Southern California who were also helping me look. Um, ultimately we all kept coming across the same name and it was hard to know for sure because the age was way off. Um, my mom did not tell me the right age range, which I kind of knew that would probably happen, but yeah. And so that was off. And then I didn't recognize any of the names other than the brother's name, but there was multiple people with different ages that had a brother with the same name. So and in Southern California. So it became um, very difficult to find any new or updated information. And yeah, so it was pretty much like, I don't know, dead end. <laughs> Everywhere I looked, it was a dead end. And I just figured that I needed to move down there. And I'd wanted to move down there since I was 16. 
Other than that, I just feel like my personality really fits down in Southern California. I just make friends really easy down there. I always feel very at home, but there was just something pulling me down there. And I really don't know if it's just that maybe the love of my life is down there or my dream job is down there. And the universe is like, no, you need to go down there. This is like where you're supposed to be. Or if it's because my real dad was down there. I don't know. But all I know is that I'm meant to be in Southern California. <laughs> and so anyway, I kind of figured I wasn't really going to be able to do much more research or reach out because every phone number I had was a dead end. So I kind of figured at this point I was going to have to just move down there and find him that way. And I had kind of not had this relationship with my mom for the last few years. Um, it's very strained. Um, and it's just because I'm really putting a lot of focus on self love and care with me that I really can't take on um, bitter feelings right now. I can't really put a focus on bitter feelings right now. That is just, I just have put aside relationships that I feel are toxic to me right now. Um, and I'm putting a lot of focus on things that are good and healing for me um, because it's very important. And I think a lot of that stress that raised my cortisol levels that created this HA came from just years of stressing about other people because even though I would do a lot of things for myself, I always had other people's feelings and, um, you know, their opinions in mind. And so anyway, that relationships has been strained. And I think, um, you know, my mom really wants to have a relationship with her kids. So reaching out and kind of offering this olive branch, um, she found my real dad and hired a private investigator. So a private investigator is something I had always thought about looking into, but it was always expensive. And it was just it was so frustrating to me that I never got this chance because I would have never been in this position if I would have just got this chance to know him. And I had tried Facebook and MySpace, believe it or not, back in that day, it was MySpace. And I had reached out to um, girls with the same name as that cousin that was in that picture that I had. And I like instantly feel this connection with this girl and she doesn't even know probably yet that, um, that we found each other, that I found my dad. Um, but this girl is literally like the only person I was ever able to see on my dad's side. So it was like, she's the only connection I ever had. Um, so I already instantly feel a great relationship with her and I can't wait to actually meet her in person. Um, we don't look identical now, but we still look a lot alike. So it's, it's kind of cool to see how that um, works out. And I've only seen that through her Facebook, but um, I had reached out to some girls with the same name on MySpace um, trying to find, and I always had a dead end. So um, ultimately it came down to a private investigator. So I think if you really, really want to find that parent and you have any shred of information, a private investigator is going to be the way to go. Um, my grandparents and my uncle and everybody didn't know anything about my real dad. So there was not a lot of resources that I had. So ultimately, um, you know, reaching out to friends um, and also getting their advice. But if you get down to it and you aren't able to get like a website or a show or anything like that to help you, um, a private investigator is probably the route to go. Um, when I got the call from my mom that she had found my real dad, I literally started hyperventilating. I was already dreading the call, so I was like really stressed out, but that was the last thing I thought that she was gonna say. I never thought my mom would ever come around to letting me have this relationship with my real dad or even going out of her way to find him. And um, I literally couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk and my friend was sitting next to me and she had no idea why I was crying and freaking out. But like literally, I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> I was literally freaking out because it was like, I like lost, like, I, and I felt like my mind and my body were not even connected anymore. It was so surreal. Whew, I almost feel a little emotion talking about it. Like it was just, it was the craziest moment, craziest moment. And then um, I was like choking out trying to get questions and I was like, so he wants to see me? And uh, she was like, yeah, he's been looking for you forever. Um, so I was really excited about that. And then um, I think Darren told her that this was a really good step for us and I loved her. And then um, I called him and talked to him for an hour and I'll put in the, just the beginning of that conversation so you can just see the, 
the emotion. It was crazy. Um, and then I got a hold of my mom afterwards and like let her know like, hey, it went really good. Thank you again. I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, so it was really good. And then we stayed in touch and he calls um, usually every week or so. And we kind of catch up and I've learned a lot about him. Um, we're both into football. We both like sports. We both coach. Um, so the outdoorsy side of me kind of makes sense now. It's like definitely in my blood <laughs> and yeah, so it was really good. And then he asked me to come down for Thanksgiving. And so this was going to be the first time I was meeting him and I was going all on my own. And some of my family was not excited about that. They were definitely super nervous. Um, but I do loss prevention, like <laughs> I'm trained. Um, but I also feel felt like it was just right like and I have been waiting for this my whole life that nothing was gonna stop me or hold me back from going down and the crazy thing is he's lived half an hour away from my aunt that's been helping me find him um he's lived half an hour from her their whole life like every since I was born they've always lived about half an hour apart from each other so that was super crazy because I usually go down there every summer after I turn 12 or every spring. So that was mind blowing knowing that I was literally half an hour away from him like my whole life. Um, yeah, so that was crazy. So anyway, I went down and stayed with my aunt for a couple days and then I drove half an hour to go meet my dad and I stayed with him the rest of the week. And I honestly thought I would probably cry when I met him for the first time. And you guys will see that. I'll pop that clip in. Nobody has seen that video yet. I think I showed one friend, but other than that, like I haven't posted it on Facebook or anything. Um, so I definitely can't wait for you guys to see that. And yeah, I didn't cry. I was so excited. It was just like, finally, like, oh, so many years. Like, I don't even know, like 20 years. Like, that's crazy. I don't know. It's, it's just mind blowing. 22 years, maybe. I don't know. A lot, a lot of years. Um, and I was just excited. And so I was actually smiling and I was like, it's my dad. Like I was, just, I was freaking out. So that was really good. Um, he was really excited. It ended up snowing, which I live in Oregon. So usually that happens every year. We have not gotten snow yet, which is super crazy. We're supposed to get snow next weekend, but even the weather people are like, really? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it snowed the next day. So I was gonna go to his house on Thanksgiving morning. And because California is not used to rain, they were like, we're gonna flood. And their version of flood is a puddle. <laughs> Cause they were saying the road was flooded out and like that was just a light puddle for us. <laughs> so anyway, because they were scared that roads would shut down and all that, I went ahead and went up the night before, the afternoon before. And so on Thanksgiving day, it ended up snowing. So my dad was super excited and he was like, I got snow in my daughter in one day. This is the best day of my life. And it was just so freaking cute. I, it was great. And then I got a FaceTime with his sister and their family that was in Colorado. And I got to meet his wife and her two daughters and their significant others. Um, so it was really, really great. It was a great time. Um, I felt very at home. I usually struggle sleeping places. Like my, my friend's house, my house and my dad's house has been the only houses I can say that I honestly like sleep super comfortably at, like fall asleep, no problem, sleep really well. Um, so that was really good. That's a good sign. Um, I did feel very at home. We got to watch football together. Um, we're definitely different teams. He's a Raiders fan. I'm a Seahawks fan. <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't give me any crap. Okay. Our Seahawks are still in the playoffs for now. <laughs> um, we'll see after this video gets posted because it'll probably get posted on Sunday. Hopefully we're good. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to get on here and pop on here and let you guys know that if you want to find your birth parent, go for it. Um, just be mentally ready because there could be a chance that your birth parent doesn't want to have a relationship. And so that's always a possibility, but just be ready to handle that mentally and just know that you're amazing and worth it. Um, despite whether they want you or not, but just know that there is happy endings out there. Um, and if they didn't, then it wasn't meant to be, but it doesn't mean that you can't reach out to the extended family, the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, the cousins, because most likely they're going to want a relationship with you. So I say if the birth parent 
you know, stop that relationship. Don't give up. There's still other family over there. Um, it's worth getting to know the answer. And I think I would have fought to find him until the day I died because I would have never known. Like, I would have never known if he wanted me or the family wanted me, which his mom, I wish I could have met her. His mom held the only baby picture that he had of me, held it every day close to her heart. And her dying wish was to get to meet me and that he would find me. And unfortunately I didn't get to meet her. It was too late for that, but I did get to have a relationship with him. And I think that was one of her biggest wishes, but uh, it would have been really nice to get to know her, but now I'm making up for all that lost time and I'm getting to know what all the rest of the family and my dad and hopefully moving down to Southern California in the next few months. Um, working really hard to make that happen and it'll be great because then I get to really have that time to have that relationship with him and the other family. So I did get to meet his dad though and, her, and his significant other. Um, they are both really sweet and now we're talking about trips to Belize and um, Mexico and so I'm really excited because I'm now going to be on this journey with my new side of my family. Um, I have a great relationship with the extended part of my family over here, really close with my cousins, my grandparents, and my uncle. Um, so I'm just, I'm a family girl um, when it comes down to it. Um, even with the immediate family struggles, it doesn't mean that I don't love or care about my family. I just have always wanted to know all the aspects of my family and I've always felt like there's kind of that like missing piece of me that that was just kind of like I couldn't feel me or whole or myself without knowing my dad and his side of the family. Um, I've also struggled with wanting to date because I don't want to get close enough to people um, close enough to guys um, because and I thought maybe that had something to do with the child abuse when I was younger but now I've learned it could be partly the HA or maybe it could be because of not knowing my real dad and being through a lot of marriages on my mom's side. So I think that I definitely feel whole and I like I'm ready to date now, which is super cool for me to say because I've never really been like ready for that. But at the same time, like I do want a family and um no matter what, like my kids are always going to know their dad because I just, I could never imagine like just the children going through like what I went through of always wondering and like, could my life have been different had I known, um, my dad could, I have avoided going through some of the really bad challenges I went through. Um, if I would have, and there's a lot of what ifs, but ultimately I think that my wild ride of a life and my hot mess of a life um, was meant to happen for a reason because I don't think I would be strong enough to share my stories now. And I feel like because I can share my stories, I feel like I can reach out to other people going through the same thing and, you know, kind of help them through it and, you know, offer advice and um, be there. So I just want to let you guys know if you are looking for your birth parent, go for it, do it. Um, you never know what it could turn out to be. And I say, just try it. If you get a number, call it. If you hit a dead end, don't give up. Um, and then if you can afford a private investigator, that could be life changing for you. Um, but yeah, so good luck you guys. I'm going to leave you with the video of the call and I'm going to leave you with meeting him and then some pictures of our Thanksgiving week together. Um, we went Black Friday shopping as a family and all that. So I want you guys to be able to see all that. And yeah, other than that, hit like, subscribe, join the tribe if you like this video. There will be more cool videos, HA updates, you name it. These videos are going to get better. I'm being picky about the laptop situation. Um, but I did figure out how to do some minor editing and adding music on my iPhone. So now I'm able to get some videos out despite the crappy laptop that's falling apart right now. <laughs> um, but the editing will get better. I will have some amazing content coming out. Um, stay tuned. There will also be a new name to this channel as well as a new intro. And that's just simply because this channel is more than just about, you know, dazzling desires. It's, it's a life about connecting and you know, really finding yourself. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on this journey to find myself and I'm only hoping that people that are also finding my channel are on a journey to find themselves and that we can relate, you know, in the comments or DM me on Instagram. Um, I got your back. And if you have any questions or just need someone to lean on during this process, 
um, I've got you. So, all right, bye guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Me is not available. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Goodbye. Fail. <laughs> that was a fail. I heard his voice. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. Well, hopefully he'll call this number back. Hello? Hello, somebody just called this number? Yeah, um, I was trying to get a hold of Matt. This is Matt. This is Matt. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I, finally, I get to meet you and I get to talk to you. Shoot. Yes. Oh my gosh. A I, long time. I have been looking for you since I was eight years old. So this is really exciting for me. Yeah, well, it's exciting for me too. Yay. Just to let you know, I you I, you put some out a long time ago on for uh, that said uh, it was some kind of thing to look for me. And I responded to it, but I don't know if you were responding to it anymore. Oh, yeah.
house and I'm getting ready to head to see my real dad for the first time ever. So I'm gonna try and video record getting to meet him so I can take you guys along on that journey. I'm super excited. I'm really, really nervous. Um, so Southern Cal normally does not rain. I legit brought the Pacific Northwest rain with me. So <laughs> this is not so fun. Um, I was actually gonna go tomorrow morning on Thanksgiving morning, but because of their storm and everything, um, I decided to go ahead and make the trip tonight so that I could at least be there for Thanksgiving for sure. And then I will be there with him for the rest of the week. So wish me luck, you guys. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and make a quick video to let you guys know and um, I'm trying not to be super nervous. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Bye. Let's go. Everybody, <laughs> finally meeting him for the first time. Mm
every time the snow is falling down and it is cold outside we gather around the fireplace and no one cares about yesterday come in come in hey buddy say hi say hi snapchat in this pure gold of a game patriots are losing channel um i'm hoping you're enjoying this channel a little bit even though i know i haven't gotten to the good challenge stuff that was creepy <laughs> um I'm a